Welcome everyone. It is 3 p.m. and it's time for the server room show. This is episode 57. Today we will continue uh, on forward from episode 56 of last week regarding uh, Sun Microsystems, uh, going through the history of uh, Sun Microsystems. In the previous episode I talked about uh, my background, how I didn't come into contact with uh, Sun Microsystems back in the day, which uh, as if you listen to the to the previous episode, I mentioned that uh, Sun Microsystems uh, workstations and servers were not actually cheap uh, back in the day. They are neither very cheap today. And uh, practically you had to have some nice job or, or be in a university or some research uh, lab or or some government entity or contractor to to come across these uh, devices the sun microsystem servers were mostly used in uh, at later uh, stages in um, telecom uh, providers like like ISPs back in back in the day so of course i i didn't come ac come across this uh, these com workstations and uh, computers back in the day in my um, high school years in uh, in a high school for example it was uh, it was not for a budget of uh, educational institutions or it's true i didn't uh, get through to university and uh, but i didn't hear about any sun workstations in in university in hungary for sure so we i also uh, discussed uh, some of the early history and uh, regarding the hardware iterations and changes some uh, microsystems went through uh, something very similar to to today of uh, apple who went from the motorola chips to power pc then transitioned to intel x86 and then uh, just lately they are shifting towards their own uh, apple silicon a little uh, bit similar happened to to sun they started out uh, in the 80s on motorola x86 sorry motorola 68000 uh, family based cpus then went on to spark based uh, systems which was their own risk uh, processor architecture of their own design and from there on they ventured to x86 based systems and uh, and eventually, uh, yeah, that's where that's where they stopped it, and uh, Oracle obtained uh, Sun Microsystem Sun Microsystems. I think it was on 2010. I mentioned that 2010 something when the when the whole thing got uh, got taken over. And then I spoke a little bit about uh, the software. Uh, because uh, Sun, even though initially was known as a hardware company, its software history uh, began uh, with its founding. We mentioned uh, uh, the fourth uh, uh, original founder of Sun Microsystems, uh, Bill Joy, who was uh, one of the leading Unix developers of the of the time. Uh, he contributed to the V. Uh, he, he contributed with the uh, VI editor, the C shell, and uh, significant work uh, of development has been done on his part on the TCP/IP protocol and, of course, the BSD Unix operating system, and and later on uh, other things. So Sun was not just known even though initially it was known of its hardware, but its uh, software was just as important. And this is where we left on the previous episode. I didn't want to start, uh, because I was running out of time, uh, an important part, uh, as I just mentioned, the software aspect of uh, Sun Microsystems, uh, talking about uh, operating systems, the Sun OS and uh, the Solaris uh, operating system. Sun is best known for its uh, Unix systems, which have a reputation for uh, system stability and uh, a consistent design philosophy. Sun's first workstation shipped with the Unisoft uh, V7 Unix, 
Later in 1982, Sun began providing Sun OS a customized 4.1 BSD Unix as the operating system for its workstations. In 1987, AT&T Corporation and Sun announced that they were collaborating on a project to merge the most popular Unix variants on the market at that time, the Berkeley Software Distribution, Unix System 5 and Senix. This became Unix System 5 Release 4 or SVR4 uh, as an acronym. On September 4, 1991, Sun announced that it would replace its existing BSD-derived Unix Sun OS 4 with one based on SVR4. This was identified internally as Sun OS 5, but a new marketing name was introduced at the same time, Solaris 2. The justification for this new overbrand was that it encompassed not only Sun OS, but also the open Windows graphical user interface and open network computing, the ONC functionality. Although Sun OS 4.1.x micro releases were retroactively named Solaris 1 by Sun, the Solaris name is used almost exclusively to refer only to the releases based on SVR4, derived Sun OS 5.0 uh, and later. For releases based on Sun OS 5, the Sun OS minor version is included in the Solaris release number. For example, Solaris 2.4 incorporates Sun OS 5.4. After Solaris 2.6, the two point was uh, dropped from the release name, so Solaris 7 incorporates Sun OS 5.7 and the latest release Sun OS 5.11 from the uh, core of Solaris 11 pot 11.4. Although SunSoft uh, stated in its initial Solaris 2 press release their intent to eventually support both Spark and X86 systems, the first two Solaris 2 release, uh, releases 2.0 and 2.1 were Spark only. An X86 version of Solaris 2.1 was released in June 1993 and about six months after the Spark version as a desktop and uniprocessor workgroup server operating system. It included the Wabi emulator to support Windows applications. From 1992, Sun also sold Interactive Unix, an operating system it acquired when it bought Interactive Systems Corporation from Eastman Kodak Company. This was a popular Unix variant for the PC platform and a major competitor to market leader SEO Unix. Sun's focus on interactive Unix diminished in favor of Solaris on both Spark and x86 systems. It was dropped as a product in 2001. By the mid-1990s, the ensuing Unix wars had largely subsided. AT&T had sold off their Unix interests and the relationship between the two companies was significantly reduced. In 1994, Sun released Solaris 2.4 supporting both Spark and x86 systems from a unified source code base. Sun dropped the Solaris 2.x version numbering scheme after the Solaris 2.6 release in 1997. The following version was branded Solaris uh, 7. This was the first 64-bit release intended for the new UltraSpark CPU based on the Spark uh, V9 architecture. Within the next four years, the successor Solaris 8 and Solaris 9 were released in 2000 and 2002 respectively. Following several years of difficult competition and loss of server market share to competitors uh, Linux based systems, Sun began to include Linux as part of its uh, strategy in 2002. Sun supported both Red Hat Enterprise Linux and the uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server on its x64 uh, systems. Companies such as Canonical LTD, Wind River Systems and Montavista also supported their version of Linux on some Spark-based systems. In 2004, after having cultivated a reputation as one of Microsoft's most vocal antagonists, Sun entered into a joint relationship with them, resolving various legal en uh, entanglements between the two companies and receiving uh, US $1.95 billion in settlement payments from them. Sun supported Microsoft Windows on its x86 systems and announced other collaborative agreements with Microsoft, including plans to support each other's virtualization environments. In 2005, the company released Solaris 10. The new version included a large number of enhancements to the operating system, as well as very novel features previously unseen in the industry. 
Solar is then updated releases continued through the next eight years. The last release from Sun Microsystems being Solaris 10, uh, 10-09. The following updates were released by Oracle under the new license agreement. The final release is uh, Solaris 10, 1-13. Uh, Previously, Sun offered a separate variant of Solaris called uh, Trusted Solaris, which included uh, augmented security features such as multi-level security and the least privilege access model. Solaris 10 included many of the same capabilities as Trusted Solaris at the time of its initial release. Solaris 10 11-06 included Solaris Trusted Extensions, which give it the uh, remaining, uh, remaining capabilities needed to make it a functional successor to Trusted Solaris. After releasing Solaris 10, its source code was opened under CDDL free software license and developed in open with contributing open Solaris community through SXCE uh, that uh, used SVR4 uh, packaging and supported open Solaris releases that used IPS packaging system. Following acquisition of Sun by Oracle, Open Solaris continued to develop in open under Illumos with Illumos distributions. We will talk about more um, in the part of uh, legacy of uh, Sun Microsystems about this Open Solaris and, uh, and uh, when Solaris 10 uh, source code was opened up uh, at a later point. Oracle Corporation continued to develop Open Solaris into the next Solaris release changing back the license to proprietary and released it as Oracle Solaris 11 in November 2011. In the show notes I included a, a table uh, thanks to Wikipedia which is a version history of, uh, of new major features uh, as they were introduced in, um, in distant uh, Solaris uh, versions or releases and um, it's uh, it's an interesting uh, table or list to, to go through because you can see uh, when each major important feature was included and in, and in which, uh, which version and uh, yeah, it, can, it can come handy uh, and to see uh, that for example uh, you know the role based access control uh, was already in uh, Solaris 8 in um, in February of 2000 or uh, there was one about the the NFS uh, file support uh, it was somewhere in the notes or or we could say uh, uh, the logical domains the, the ZFS ad adding the ZFS file system in Solaris 10 uh, adding the grub uh, bootloader, iSCSI initiator support, uh, the GNOME desktop, adding uh, D-Trace, uh, dynamic tracing, uh, the Solaris containers, uh, SMF, the service management facility, and here it is, an NFS version 4. Uh, it came in uh, Solaris 9 uh, in 2002, May 28. So it's, it's interesting to go through and see as new features were added into uh, continuing releases in, in Solaris. The legacy I mentioned, uh, legacy of Sun, uh, I want to mention here uh, more in depth uh, Open Solaris, Illumos, and, uh, and Open Indiana. Open Solaris was based on Solaris, which was uh, originally released by Sun in 1991. Solaris is a version of Unix System 5, release 4, SVR4, jointly developed by Sun and AT&T to merge features from several existing Unix systems. It was licensed by Sun from Novel to replace Sun OS. Planning, from planning for Open Solaris started in early 2004. A pilot program was formed in September 2004 with 18 non-Sun community members and ran for nine months, growing to 145 external participants. Sun submitted the CDDL Common Development and Distribution License to the OSI, which approved it on January 14th of 2005. The first part of the Solaris code base to be, opened, uh, to be open sourced was the Solaris Dynamic Tracing Facility, commonly known as D-Trace. 
a tool that aids in the analysis, debugging, and uh, tuning of applications and systems. DTRACE was released under the CDDL on January of 25th, 2005, on the newly launched OpenSolaris.org uh, website at that time. The bulk of the Solaris system code was uh, released on June uh, 14th of 2005. The, there remains uh, some system code uh, that was not open sourced and uh, which was available as a pre-compiled uh, binary files only. In 2003, an addition to the Solaris development process was initiated under the program name Software Express for Solaris or just uh, Solaris Express. A binary release based on the current development basis was made available for download on a monthly basis allowing anyone to try out new features and test the quality and stability of the OS as it progressed uh, towards the, uh, to the release of the next official Solaris version. A later change to this program introduced a quarterly release model with support available uh, renamed Solaris Express Developer Edition SXDE as short. Initially Sun Solaris Express program provided a distribution based on the open Solaris code in combination with software found only in Solaris releases. The first independent distribution was released on June 17, 2005. The Solaris Express Community Edition, SXCE for short, was intended specifically for open Solaris developers. On the March 19, 2007, Sun announced that it had hired Ian Murdoch, founder of Debian, to head the project Indiana, an effort to produce a complete open Solaris distribution with uh, GNOME and userland tools from uh, GNU plus a network-based package management system. The new distribution was planned to refresh the user experience and would become the successor to Solaris Express as the basis for future releases of Solaris. The announced project Indiana had several goals, including providing an open source binary distribution of the Open Solaris project, replacing SXDE. The first release of the distribution was Open Solaris 2008.05. On May 5th, 2008, Open Solaris 2008.05 was released in a format that could be bought it as a live CD or installed directly. It uh, used the GNOME desktop environment as the primary user interface. The later Open Solaris 2008.11 release included a, a graphical user interface for ZFS snapshotting uh, capabilities known as a Time Slider that provides functionality similar to Mac OS's uh, Time Machine. In December 2008, Sun Microsystems and Toshiba America Information Systems announced plans to distribute Toshiba laptops pre-installed with Open Solaris. On April the 1st, 2009, the Tecra M10 and the Portage R600 came pre-installed with OpenSolaris 2008.11 release and several supplemental software packages. On the 1st of June 2009, OpenSolaris 2009.06 uh, was released with support for the Spark platform. On January 6, uh, 2010, it was announced that Solaris Express program would be closed while an open Solaris binary release was scheduled to be released uh, on the 26th of March 2010, the open Solaris 2010.03 uh, release, uh, however, never appeared. SXC releases uh, terminated with uh, build 130, and open Solaris releases terminated with build 134 a few weeks later. The next release of Open Solaris based on build uh, 134 was due in March 2010, but it was never fully released, though the packages were made available online, uh, made available on the package uh, repository. Instead, Oracle renamed the binary distribution uh, to Solaris 11 Express, changed the license terms and released build 151A as uh, 2010.11 in November uh, 2010. Uh, as a side note, there are a few forks based on uh, Open Solaris, such as um, Bellanix, Eon, ZFS Storage, Illumos, uh, Jaris OS, MartUX, Milex, Nexenta OS, uh, Nexan Nexenta Store, Open Indiana, Open SXE, uh, Shilix, Smart OS, Storm OS. I think Nextenta OS is, uh, is discontinued, uh, so some of these might uh, not be uh, 
still maintain, but uh, it's, it's a good list to know. On the 14th of September 2010, Open Indiana was formally launched at the GISC Center in uh, London. While Open Indiana is a fork in the technical sense, it is a continuation of Open Solaris in uh, spirit. The project intends to deliver a System 5 family operating system, which is binary compatible with the Oracle products uh, Solaris 11 and Solaris 11 Express. However, rather than being based around the uh, OS net consolidation like Open Solaris was Open Indiana became a distribution based on Illumos. The first release is uh, still based around OS net. However, the project uses the same IPS package management system as uh, Open Solaris did. Illumos is a partly uh, free and open source Unix operating system. It is based on Open Solaris, which was based on System 5 Release 4, SVR4, and the Berkeley software distribution uh, BSD. Illumos compromises a kernel, device drivers, system libraries, and utility software for system administration. This core is now the base for many different open source Illumos distributions in a similar way in which the Linux kernel is used in different Linux distributions. Open Indiana is a free and open source Unix operating system derived from Open Solaris and based on Illumos. Developers forked Open Solaris after Oracle Corporation discontinued it in order to continue development and distribution of the source code. Open Indiana is named after Project Indiana, the development code name at Sun Microsystems for Open Solaris. Uh, a list of uh, open source contributions of uh, Sun Microsystems. I did mention that Sun had many open source in initiatives and uh, products. Almost uh, all of the software was uh, open source, as well as some of the hardware designs. Uh, I left in the show notes a list of uh, uh, some of the some of the products uh, I could uh, put together, which uh, contributed to to open source community. Operating systems like Open Solaris, uh, Open HA cluster, high availability cluster, the Java desktop Linux. In storage and networking, obviously ZFS, uh, QFS, and the Lustre file system. In virtualization, uh, VirtualBox, and the uh, logical domains, virtualization uh, server. Databases, the Java database, uh, kind of like a Sun-supported ver version of Apache Derby. MySQL, under developer tools, uh, NetBeans, uh, Java, uh, in grid uh, technology, Sun grid engine, in the middleware category, OpenDS, OpenSSO, Glassfish, Glassfish Enterprise Service Bus, Glassfish uh, web server, in productivity, the aforementioned uh, Star Office, which uh, got open sourced by Sun and then it uh, founded the basis for uh, OpenOffice.org or the open office, uh, uh, office package. And in hardware, the open Spark uh, open source chip designs and the TN, T1 and T2 uh, multi-core, multi-threaded proce processors uh, design. Uh, desktop environments used in uh, Solaris. There was the open windows, the uh, always called the older uh, OLVWM open windows in uh, Solaris, I left a screenshot of that, and uh, the common desktop environment, the CD, which was uh, eventually open sourced in uh, the 2012 uh, August, uh, and this is a screenshot in the show notes, uh, CD running on uh, Solaris 10. Early releases of Solaris used uh, open windows as the standard uh, desktop environment. In Solaris 2.0 to 2.2, open windows supported both uh, news and X applications and provided backward compatibility for some view applications from Sun's older desktop environment. News allowed applications to be built in an object-oriented way using PostScript, a common printing language released in 1982. The X window system originated from MIT's project Athena in 1984 and allowed for the display of an application to be disconnected from the machine where the application was running, separated by uh, a network connection. Sun's originally bundled Sun V applications uh, suit was ported to uh, X. 
Sun later dropped support for legacy Sun View applications and news with uh, Open Windows 3.3, which shipped with Solaris 2.3, and switched to X11 R5 with uh, Display PostScript support. The graphical look and feel remained uh, based upon Open Look. Open Windows 3.6.2 was the last uh, release under Solaris 8. The Open Look Window Manager uh, OLWM with the uh, other Open Look specific applications were dropped in Solaris 9, but support libraries were still bundled, providing long term binary backwards compatibility with uh, existing applications. The Open Look Virtual Window Manager can still be downloaded uh, for Solaris from uh, Sun Freever and works on releases as recent as Solaris 10. The Common Desktop Environment uh, CD was open sourced in August 2012. Sun and other Unix vendors created an industry alliance to standardize Unix desktops. As a member of the Common Open Software uh, Environment initiative, Sun helped co develop the Common Desktop Environment. This was an initiative to create a standard Unix desktop environment. Each vendor contributed different components. Hewlett Packard contributed the window manager, IBM provided the file manager, and Sun provided the email and calendar facilities as well as drag and drop support uh, tool talk. This new desktop environment was based upon the motif look and feel, and the old open look desktop environment was considered legacy. CD unified uh, Unix desktops across multiple uh, open system vendors. CD was available as an unbundle, uh, as an uh, unbundled add-on for Solaris 2.4 and 2.5, as was included in Solaris 2.6 through 10. In 2001, Sun issued a preview release of the open source desktop environment GNOME 1.4, based on the GTK Plus toolkit for Solaris 8. Solaris 9 uh, 8/03 introduced GNOME 2.0 as an alternative to CD. Solaris 10 includes Sun's Java desktop system, which is based on GNOME and comes with a large set of applications, including Star Office, Sun's Office Suite, Sun's describes uh, GDS as a major component of Solaris 10. The Java desktop system is not included in Solaris 11, which instead ships with a stock version of GNOME. Likewise, CD applications are no longer included in Solaris 11, but many libraries remain for binary backwards compatibility. The open source desktop environments KDE and XFC with numerous other window managers also compile and run on uh, recent versions of Solaris. Sun was investing in a new desktop environment called Project Looking Glass since 2003. However, the project has been inactive since late 2016. And I ran out of time. I had a little piece left in the show notes if you want to have a look at it uh, briefly about the Sun workstations. Uh, mostly the Sun uh, Ultra series of those uh, Sun Ultra 45 and Sun Ultra 30s I would like to uh, put my hands on or even a Sun Ultra 5 come on it's uh, it's also a nice machine but definitely those Ultra 30 and Ultra 45s uh, so yeah it was a two-part series of uh, the history of Sun Microsystems I, I probably will just uh, label it uh, Sun Microsystems in, in the podcast and uh, I hope you enjoyed it most of the time these uh, two part episodes are not really planned it's just I start uh, working on the show notes and then I realize that in, in half an hour there is no way to to push through uh, on, on that much uh, information uh, as, I, as I wrote down so uh, sometimes I have to break and, and do, do a part two but uh, I think it's still fun and uh, as always the accompany accompanying show notes are, are a vital piece of, uh, of uh, all the information uh, passed through and uh, it can serve as a great uh, uh, basis of uh, information while listening to the show. Uh, thank you very much and uh, see you next Saturday in episode uh, 58. And probably I uh, go and uh, work on the show notes now and figure out what to talk about uh, in episode 58. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be something interesting. Thank you very much and, uh, and see you next week.